Well, hello, that's me again. Today is the last day of October, it's 31st, and we have a mixed bag of things to discuss, but I will start with a rather uh, interesting um, um, approach, so to speak, if you wish, to the whole situation which is developing, and they, the situation is always developing, and now it's just accelerating tremendously. But look at this. Um, I will start with this. Um, here is the definition of the Dunning-Kruger effect explained. Uh, you, I use very often this phrase that you cannot uh, explain to imbecile that he's an imbecile because he's an imbecile. And this is basically what Dunning-Kruger effect part of it uh, is essentially. And look at this. Here's the definition of the Dunning-Kruger effect. Named after psychologist David Dunning and Justin Kruger, the Dunning-Kruger effect is a type of cognitive bias that causes people to overestimate their knowledge or ability, particularly in areas uh, with which they have little to no experience. Uh, that is why I always use this, um, so to speak, uh, cognitive test when I speak about all those military reporters or journalists and I tell them, you know what, why don't you stop writing about the military strategy or geopolitics, let alone military science, and concentrate on something like the gastroenterology, for example, or open heart surgeries, if you are good explaining and talking about the uh, things which require an enormous volume of knowledge and training, uh, then you have to be, you know, able to perform pretty much in anything, you know, from the most advanced, you know, the physics experiments to open heart surgeries to, you know, basically commanding the uh, divisions and armies. Uh, but that's the whole situation and what we have today. Uh, it exists everywhere, make no mistake. In Russia there is a problem, especially with media class. But in the combined West now, it is it reached absolutely grotesque uh, scale with all this holy journalism thing which is the bunch of the ignoramuses who have no any particular education at best they have the glorified English when they begin to run things and we end up with the so-called you know uh, global anthropological global warming Greta Thunberg we have Miss Mr. Biden and then we have these things and this is all also related to the Dunning-Kruger, albeit there is a degree of the very serious input of the malicious agenda. And uh, I want to po point out to you this thing. Uh, a few days ago, actually, and this was on Fox, um, and... Uh, you know what, it doesn't matter if it's Fox or so, uh, uh, something else, but DNC, the Democratic National Committee Connected the, uh, Media, they will not report on that because they are the ones promoting this insanity. But here it is, Pentagon schools infested with shocking pornographic material for military kids. Time to uh, uh, send a dick pic. Many of the pornographic and ra uh, radical uh, gender ideology books at Department of uh, Education or uh, uh, schools libraries were added within the last two years. So to de demonstrate to you what is happening, we can go into the a little bit uh, deeper detail, which Fox uh, uh, again uh, reports. And uh, we all want to have sex with lots of people, one of the book states. The prostate gland feels amazing when ma massaged. Lots of men, gay or straight, like how this feels. This is what they tell kids in their, whatever, third, fourth grade. So let me put it this way. For those who never experienced real um, prostate exam or prostate massage, as I did, uh, no, it doesn't feel good. It hurts like hell and it's very unpleasant experience. But again, what do I know? I mean, some schlemazel from New York who graduated some Ivy League in journalism or communication school, and that means he was dumbed down even more before he was born. So, and he knows it better because it's agenda. This is what the Democratic Party has become now. And uh, knowing what the, the midterms coming, we have the situation that, yes, we have the huge effort all across the United States and all across the combined West of complete, complete perversion of children. 
and this is what they do and this is just one of the uh, uh, so to speak issues which I wanted to demonstrate to you and yeah there are people with uh, w within this Dunning-Kruger uh, basically paradigm who think that they know about gender most of them sadly are American teachers and I do not want make no mistake I do not want to make the sweeping generalization because I know there are many very good decent people who work in American schools and try to do their best while being uh, guided so to speak that by the politics of it all in a completely corrupt uh, uh, and absolutely degenerate system of the American uh, teachers uh, uh, trade unions and I want to tell you that uh, many of them they bought it many of them they bought it maybe it was the compromise with their uh, values which they never had probably uh, others yes yeah, mundane tasks and uh, i uh, quote uh, colonel Wil wilkerson all the time it's mortgages it's their families it's their food on the table and they are afraid to raise their voice and stand up to this absolute insanity and in fact crime and it's crime against humanity what is happening uh, against uh, western children primarily because they are afraid to lose the job. But if you look attentively at, uh, for example, who runs their um, um, uh, American, one of the American uh, teachers union, here's uh, the lady called Mr. Mrs. Wayne Garden. She is open lesbo and she has been the chief of the trade uh, teacher, one of the trade of uh, unions of American teachers for many years. So you can only imagine what this woman is promoting because evidently the issue of cutting dicks uh, of young boys in America and doing the, uh, this uh, whatever they call th hormonal therapy to turn them from boys to girls and vice versa is becoming absolute nor normal and this is horrifying and uh, this is where we have the issue uh, first we have the issue of both malicious agenda and of course the Dunning-Kruger those idiots many of them they are they are believers they are genuine articles they think that they know what is going on in terms of psychology in terms of biology of those children which they push to become absolute freaks of nature but we also have the uh, and this is the Dunning-Kruger but we also have the situation that yes sadly only uh, only parents periodically try to raise their voice but they immediately, immediately sabotaged by the american media because many people who work in american media they also believe us in that because yeah they're journalists they think that you know because they got the degree from ivy league and some useless crap they think that they know stuff they don't they don't and, and again as i already stated uh there is nothing uh, more vile than uh, uh basically the journalist who decided in the world i mean then uh, who decided that he knows uh, basically things which require many years of com complex scientific academic training and then practical application that that also spreads towards number of other humanities so to speak subjects of which i speak constantly and then we have the situation yes we have the basically which is insanity and when you look at this and you begin to understand and I am on the record for many years and I wrote about this many times then when people say that oh my god American education or Western European education now public education is complete crap I mean it is it's absolutely degenerate in fact is I remember American schools in uh, 1990s they were not the best by any stretch of imagination. The STEM, uh, the basically, especially physics, mathematics education in American schools was always not good. But at least they taught something and nobody taught you about how to massage prostate. And you know what? At that time, you would be thrown out of the uh, school if you would do that. But now when you have those uh, basically drag queen parties, and you have the uh, basically stem practically eliminated what they teach there under the science uh, uh, um, uh, auspices or this generic title or in math it is there it's pathetic and then of course you have those people who grow up 
and guess what? You get the new generation of the political, so to speak, leaders. And if anybody thinks that some somehow those magical, ooh, you know, I believe that some the top-notch colleges in the United States can close this gap, they cannot. They probably can close it in some again humanities field, like communications or political science, because they do not require any kind of serious knowledge or serious academic training. For example, political science is a fraud. It's not the science. But if you have the situation with the STEM, if you have the situation with the mathematics, physics, chemistry not being taught properly, and then you have the, uh, I mean, it's ridiculous, all those entrance exams based on the ACT or SAT scores, you get in the university, it cannot already bridge this gap. If you're bad and if you are really uneducated on this matter, you will remain primarily uneducated or it will uh, require an enormous effort to close the gap, to make you and, you know, to push you to some proper academic level where you, somebody like good engineer or pharmacologist or, you know, people of this nature can come out of you. If not, which is the case today, you will have the basically the whole new wave of ignoramuses who are very good about massaging the prostate, but they will not know how to freaking design a chair, let alone serious uh, commercial aircraft or satellite or what, satellite or what have you. And this is this is the generation of people who also come out with the acute case of the Dunning Kruger syndrome because they think because they play some academic games or they learn to write some uh, lines of code in some C plus or C sharp, what have you, that they know stuff, they don't. And this is a tragedy which is happening because we are observing right now in real time a catastrophe with cognitive faculties of the Western people, Western men and women. And as such, we have the substitution there. And you know, entropy, you know, that nature doesn't, you know, uh, like the emptiness. You immediately have those gaps and those niches filled with the insane social and pseudo-biological, pseudo-biological theories, and we have what we have. And then people say, oh my gosh, how did this happen? Very simple, very simple. You have been brainwashed from the early age. And we observe this now, and actually the more ignorant the person is, the more Dunning-Kruger and malicious agenda begin, um, agendas begin to uh, basically uh, manifest themselves. And this is simple as that. And there are, uh, you wouldn't uh, hear from those people very often such things as, I don't know, I cannot have opinion on this matter because this is beyond my expertise and things of this nature. No, you have this uh, situation with the whole wave of all-knowing people who later then get elected, you know what, to U.S. Congress and even become the presidents. And you look at this and it's like, what the hell, man? And it is indeed, what the hell? And speaking of that, so this relates very specifically for, to, uh, to the situation which we have today in the, um, uh, basically, uh, geopolitical situation in the world. And thankfully, Glenn Deason did uh, due diligence and he showed us, for example, what are those people, what are those institutions stuffed, I mean, packed with the people with the Dunning-Kruger and malicious agenda. Sometimes it's uh, pseudo-biological, sometimes it's propaganda, some kind of whatever, you know, LGBTQ what uh, being imposed on children. But look at this, and this has everything to do with what I'm about to tell you. Glenn Deason did his due diligence and he presented to us this uh, basically uh, two headlines, one from March and another just recently in October from this uh, 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 supposedly uh, uh, reputable, there are no reputable uh, publications in the United Kingdom, there is nothing reputable about United Kingdom, but look at this. And in March, this economist, this is, you know, tour de force intellectually, supposedly, people who are supposed to know about economy, they don't, believe me, most of them are dumbers, dumbers. and look at this, Vladimir Putin's fortress, Russia, is crumbling. So, uh, this was in March, then we have the, basically, uh, about seven months passed by, and bang! As Europe falls into recession, Russia climbs out. Real-time data shows up subdued by strengthening economy. Uh, <clears throat> actually, the, that's the issue. 
at least, hey, the Economist published this, but the point is, the, it, it is pathetic even to look at the March uh, uh, issue and the headline or, or the front page of the Economist, because basically what was they printed in the October was also true in March, as a matter of fact. But the issue here is precisely what I've been talking about when you have people who <coughs> know well how to cut your dick off or whatever, provide their hormonal therapy, but they don't understand what real economy is and what real geo practical geopolitics is. They, as usual, miscalculate it, while obviously providing a lot of the propaganda, pardon me. And now they have to admit this, oh my God, this is that, you know, globalist, you know, top-notch magazine, the media outlet supposedly with the geniuses from all those trashy universities, uh, uh, humanities program, who populate this, they say now that Russia is doing okay. Well, Russia was doing okay all, the, all along. It's just the fact that they, as usual, miscalculate. When your curricula is filled instead of the serious sciences, instead of the serious academic routines, with all kinds of propaganda garbage and pseudo or pseudo history, pseudo economics, pseudo what have you sciences, and you get the degree in it, and then you go and begin to work in the all kinds of organizations, ranging from the media, which is again, Western media are done, it's a sewer, both in human and uh, uh, journalist terms, but or you go to work for the government, what do you get? You miscalculate all the time. And that's what we see now. And we see this desperation. And one of the last manifestations of this desperation was, of course, the uh, latest, which was two days ago, attempt on attacking the Black Sea Fleet uh, in Sevastopol. The attack was successfully uh, basically repelled with uh, Ivan Golubets minesweeper having minor uh, uh, damage and there is a minor damage to another ship but uh, both uh, are totally afloat and they fine. They will be back into their uh, first line service. And the question is now, Russia says that, you know what, screw you, and we're not going to be following this grain deal, and correctly so, and Russia has all means to both either sink the whatever fl flows in the Black Sea, or it, she, uh, Russia will start checking, or basically uh, doing the check of a, every vessel which comes through this corridor, because it was precisely from the, in this corridor where British who are in charge of this, and Britain is trying to deny it, but it's, they can do whatever they want, but it was British organized and supplied to Ukrainian forces to attack Sevastopol. So it's typical jackal behavior of the United Kingdom, but uh, what I want to say, some people do not understand that what it uh, begins to move in a long, uh, so to speak, uh, 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 term, and what will be the outcomes, and here it is. Uh, just let me show you. First, while this attack was ongoing on Sevastopol, you can see yourself in the middle of this whole uh, thing, you would have uh, one of the uh, America's uh, P8, I believe, or maybe AVAX even, you know, E3 Sentry. There certainly was RC-135, I believe that's how they called the electronic warfare airplanes from Great Britain, and you had the Global Hawk, you know, hanging out there, you know, just obviously doing things connected to the control of those drones and obviously observing Russian reaction, getting everything they could in terms of signal intelligence, especially how uh, Russian Navy, Black Sea Navy's air defense systems of the ships work. So that's what they were doing. But, but immediately before that actually, but it's also related now to what was happening uh, with uh, generally the way West uh, uh, being very covertly and trying to avoid the head-on clash with Russia is trying to do behind <coughs> the, um, behind the scene with their best proxy Ukraine. Uh, <coughs> Russian Foreign Ministry issued this statement. <coughs> it was uh, on the 27th, which was the uh, four days ago and Russia by uh, speaking on, on behalf of Russia, the for Russian foreign ministry, uh, they stated that we can target your commercial satellites and if need be we will shoot them down or just destroy them. Unlike most of the countries in the world, including the United Kingdom by the way, uh, Russia has a very advanced anti-satellite 
uh, program. In fact, it is, we understand it's not just very advanced. It is much more advanced than the same with the United States. The United States also has some anti-satellite capabilities. But Russia have been in the what is called inspector satellites business for a long time, which are the satellites which are out there, they hang out there, but once it's needed, they begin the movement and they can change orbits, they can fly closer to their most expensive uh, for example, American uh, Intel assets, like it was the case a couple of years ago with the Keyhole satellites, the best uh, optronic satellite ever in American history. When they launched that thing, then and then suddenly Russian inspector satellite appeared near it, which means, of course, what? In the case of war, or in, it could basically annihilate it. And it could be a kinetic annihilation by the satellite slumming into this extremely expensive and the best ever in American history optronic uh, uh, satellite. Oh, <coughs> probably spray the paint on its main lens and that will be it. Very inexpensive and very practical solution. But of course, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's all only going to happen in the case of real war. But, but after the situation with the Starlink and uh, Russia saying that, yeah, we will target commercial satellite. Russia can, and that's what I was on uh, uh, a record for many years now. In real war, if it comes down to it, God forbids, even in the non-nuclear variant, so to speak, uh, Russian uh, uh, anti-satellite uh, capabilities, which are enormous, including their uh, ability to basically target with the laser weapons of the satellites and, you know, what have you, and even <clears throat> A235 Nudal, which is capable to shoot down the X-37, the vaunted and highly treasured, you know, the little shuttle which United States launches there. So, I mean, there's no good outcome there. And United States and NATO, obviously, will become extremely, really fast, I mean, basically blind and deaf. And that's the whole idea. But Russia can always start this with the commercial things to demonstrate what is going on and pentagon knows it i mean and, and national security agency also know this and the only thing they can do is to make those you know rara statements but reality is uh, that uh, in real war god forbids again uh pentagon and u.s and nato armies will be blind and deaf but but if you look at this now and you now tie together it with the situation on the attack on the <clears throat> uh, basically Sevastopol and the way they uh, really, really uh, think that they are safe while flying inter international uh, airspace. Let me show you something. Here's the, uh, if you look at this line, it's actually 266 uh, kilometers long. It is between the Turkey, between Turkey and uh, Crimea. If you cut it in half approximately, this is, <coughs> that will be about 130 kilometers from Crimean uh, shores where those all those American and British, uh, you know, uh, planes, you know, AVAX and RC 135s or whatever the name of those the, uh, uh, planes fly together with Global Hawk. Uh, they are well within the range of uh, any S-400 or S-300, which is deployed there. So in case of war, they really need to think very, very hard if they want to continue to do what they are doing. And some people now say that Russia is ready for the World War III. And, you know, and but of course, this World War III being purely conventional. Russia was ready for it for a couple, since a couple of years ago, actually, and that's when you look at this and you understand that uh, Russia was doing all uh, uh, kind of things of all kind of nature to demonstrate that Russia is ready, if it comes down to it, including facing NATO. Russia doesn't want to do this, but as actually granted with some bumps. Uh, a recent <coughs> partial mobilization of 300,000 demonstrated. I mean, Russia can do that and can can uh, uh, mobilize, if need be, two and a half million people. And yeah, it, there are some bumps, absolutely normal for the mobilization of this scale. But I mean, this is a signal. NATO cannot do that. And then you make your own conclusions. And this is what <coughs> is happening when you try to explain this to people who are from Dunning Kruger and malicious agenda uh, environment who know absolutely nothing and who tr make it to their uh, top uh, political echelons of both United States and Western Europe and explain <coughs> to them 
uh, that they are morons is impossible because they are morons. And that's what you have. You have mis miscalculations piling up non-stop, one after another, after another. And this was the case with the Sevastopol. Now Russia shut down the, uh, well, she, so to speak, stopped for a while participation in the grain deal. And this is, uh, will be, uh, Russia will begin the patrolling of this corridor and actually checking all those vessels which come in and out. So, well, people evidently cannot m calculate the results of their activities. And to demonstrate a little bit more of, of this, uh, just to understand who you're dealing with in the West. These are not normal people. Uh, <clears throat> Christine Lagarde who is uh, obviously um, European president of the European Central Bank, she, <coughs> she probably is a kind of classic case of the Dunning-Kruger. Look what she says. And she said she doesn't know where inflation came from. Sure, this is your central banker. And she said, we do it because, we're, speaking about the raising the interest rate, that's the only thing they know how to do. We do it because we are fighting inflation. That had pretty much come about from nowhere, she said. And then she begins to splash about the energy crisis, of which she obviously has zero understanding. And by the way, it would be a good idea for the central bank bankers to, to be a little bit more well-versed in the practical geopolitics. But as you can see yourself, the energy crisis caused by Mr. Putin, who has decided in an unjustifiable way to invade another country. This is your classic economic and political and military elites of the West, guys. Enjoy. Look at her. She is absolutely clueless. And uh, you have to really understand this, and I'm right about this nonstop. Most of them are. Some of them who have clue, they usually are not allowed too close to <coughs> this echo chamber. So, but... Speaking about The Economist and these headlines about how it admitted that it knows shit, basically, here it is, uh, Mr. Grossi, uh, Mr. Grossi, who is, by the way, the uh, chair of the uh, um, uh, International Atomic Agency, look, by the way, who he is, uh, uh, he is, uh, Mr. Grossi, uh, graduated in 83 from the Pontific Catholic uh, uh, University of Argentina. He has a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science and then he graduated Institute of International Studies with MA and PhD in History, International Relations and International Politics. Guess what this guy does? He is the chairman of the International Atomic Energy uh, uh, Agency. Can you believe this? There you go. But look at this, even this ignoramus two days ago, he says that, well, U.S. loses leadership in commercial nuclear technology to Russia, Chief says. The United States lost its leadership in commercial nuclear technology to Russia, and Director General Rafael Grossi said at a conference hosted by the Washington-based Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. Um, this is just <coughs> one of the... Uh, so to speak, fields where the United States lost uh, leadership to Russia a long time ago, and to China, uh, uh, by the way. And I am constantly on record now, and again, I'm writing the fourth book, United States lost the arms race, and it lost not just like lost it, it lost it catastrophically. And this is what you get then uh, when you have people who know only how to do PR, and who are absolutely ignorant and who are absolutely biased, you have those people with the so-called lack of knowledge and you begin to see this manifestation of Dunning-Kruger effect across the board from military to economics to politics to history to what have you. And when you have now the new generation which is well versed in the prostate massage and is educated largely within this completely perverted, inhumane uh, framework of the uh, uh, gender confusion. And basically, again, I was already stated, crime against children. What do you expect? Can you now imagine what kind of generation is coming up next? and which will be the leaders of the so-called whatever will be left from, the, left from the Western world? I do not have good expectations. 
I anticipate a lot of a lot of uh, uh, tragedy basically and volatility around the world because of that because you will have the people who will be morons to whom you won't be able to explain that they are morons because they are morons and that's my friend is Dunning-Kruger effect in practical matters so this is what I wanted to talk to you about today and uh, try to kind of tie it together with the geopolitics but this is me for today and uh, as always I appreciate the support from my wonderful sponsors both on Patreon and buy me coffee and as always guys those who can afford I really appreciate your support please support me on Patreon or buy me a coffee Jack or uh, just you know subscribe to this channel and I will be talking to you later have a nice rest of the week guys bye bye